Join Chris and Suzanne Vester today on Faith Family Fulfillment as they lead discussions on creating a strong bond and having a loving relationship through Christian values. Guests on the show share insightful stories and ideas to enhance a positive family upbringing and create trust in one another, as well as providing encouraging words of wisdom everyone should hear. And now, here are Chris and Suzanne. Well, hello, and welcome to another episode of Faith, Family, and Fulfillment. I am your co-host, Chris. And I'm Suzanne. And we have with us today, Chris and Jamie Bailey. I cannot wait to hear their whole story. Marriage counselors with putting their faith at the center of that. Christian marriage counselors. Can I actually make that statement? Is that what Absolutely. I mean? mm-hmm. Absolutely. Christian marriage counselors. Um, their project is called Expedition Marriage. Can I call it a project? It's project an ongoing ministry. project. Yeah. Yeah. Ongoing project. project. Yeah. That, that, that is their right. ministry is Expedition Marriage. We're going to talk about how that came to be today and like a little bit of their story and how they came to Christ. And I'm really excited to get that testimony out there. I'm going to pray us in and we'll get started. Okay. All right. Okay. Fantastic. Thank you. Thank you guys. Lord, we come to you today humble as always. Um, we love the way that you show up for us, even sometimes when we don't show up for you. Mm-hmm can't wait to get this story out there. And I know that you just, you will be the glory in all the story as you always are. I ask you to lead and guide us in this conversation so that we can ask the right questions and make sure that the story gets told. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Well, Chris and Jamie, give us some background, like a little bit of like the story behind how Expedition Marriage came to be. I think your story creates Expedition Marriage, correct? Am I, am I, Yes, you are right with that. Um, I guess I'll share a little bit about my part in it is, you know, I am a woman who came from a very dysfunctional family. And as a young child, you know, I went through a lot on my own and there was a lot of chaos and strife and addiction and abuse in my life. And it was just really chaotic and difficult for me. And I went through, you know, my teen years and all of that, just very alone and always wanting, like, I know the neighbors hear the noise in our house. I know people know, I know teachers know, I knew people knew. And I always wondered like, why isn't anybody helping? Why isn't anybody, you know, engaging and and asking what's going on or, or just reaching out a hand. And so that really impacted me throughout most of my life is just doing things alone. And I remember I was in middle school and we had to write a project on what we wanted to be, had to write a paper on what we wanted to be when we grew up. And I wanted to be a psychologist. And that was my mindset behind it. You know, I'm in middle school. I don't know what all this entails, but what I do know is that somebody who helps people who are hurting. And I knew the pain that I had of just being alone in that suffering. It's one thing to suffer, but it's a whole nother level when you're suffering by yourself. And so right then I knew, and I had no idea God's hand is in this. I didn't know the (laughs) Lord at all, but I knew I don't want anybody to hurt on their own. Mm. And so that's when I wanted to become a counselor or psychologist. And I went on through my life and I ended up, you know, I could have been so side railed from this, you know, it's amazing. It is nothing but the hand of God, why I am where I am. I ended up becoming a a pregnant teenager. My mom um, had me forced me to drop out of school, out of high school in when I was 15 years old, before even I was pregnant, just because it was, she didn't think I could handle it. I wasn't smart enough. I wasn't good. I couldn't, you know, keep up and things like that. And, you know, surprisingly, it's because I'm in this dysfunctional home. And so here I am, I'm a high school dropout. Then I become a pregnant teenager. I'm in a relationship with this man who's abusive And I end up having our daughter and we got married. And here I am, this young married woman in a domestic violence situation, no education, nothing to fall back on. And it just hit me one day when um, he had kicked our dog. And when he did that, it like flipped a switch in me that said, if he would do that to your dog, he will do that to your child. And I didn't have the worthiness to allow him to, or to, you know, have him treat me better, but there's no way he was going to do that to my child. 
And so at that point, you know, I left, I left the marriage and, you know, was filing for divorce. And I actually ended up sending him to prison Mm. for five years for domestic violence. And, and it was like three weeks after that, this has happened that I left my husband that I meet this guy in in a karaoke bar. (laughs) So (laughs) So we mentioned that we weren't believers. Yeah, we were not believers, but he was singing some Billy Joel and it was great. I had no intentions. And of course, I'm coming with all of this, this baggage, you know, this mess and we're not believers and we meet and we begin to spend every day together, do everything wrong. You know, we're doing all kinds of things. We shouldn't be, we moved in together after five months of knowing each other, like unbelievers. Yes, we were. That's exactly right. Mm -hmm. And, and then, you know, we got married and I ended up putting myself through school. I homeschooled myself. You know, in my early twenties, it took me three years to get my high school diploma, but I did it myself through like blood, sweat, and tears doing that. They'd send books. She'd be at the breakfast table, crying bubbles and exams and send them back. Yes. It was great. But that's when, you know, I started and this was still before, you know, we knew Jesus at all and I'm going through that. And then I end up getting my, my bachelor's after I got my high school diploma, went on more and got my bachelor's and then ended up getting my master's in counseling. But at this point, when I'm working on my master's, even my bachelor's, we had become believers, become believers yes. but originally my heart, and this is where we'll get to expedition marriage was we've got, to, I've got to help people. There are hurting people out there like me. And I didn't want anybody to experience what I, what I was going through. Mm-hmm. Well, I didn't come from the dysfunction. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I came from a large family, not a, 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 a I guess believed that there was God, but not a really a God believing or Christian family. And so, you know, just kind of went and acted worldly. I mean, mm-hmm. as a result, Jamie and I met, like she said, we did a lot of things, moved in mm-hmm. before marriage, which mm-hmm. stats, if you look at the research, just it's a bad idea. It's by the grace of God that, you know, but he had a plan even through all that. Um, yeah. And I'll, I will point this out too. Uh, when I met this guy, he was into crystals. That's what he did. He would, you you wouldn't find him without like a pocket full of crystals and all of that. So he was very like new agey. Mm -hmm. And I was like, whatever, you know, I didn't know anything about anything. And so you want to believe in rocks? That's fine. (laughs) That was acceptable to me, but it's just so funny now to know oh, yeah. like where the Lord has brought us. They're, they're the like ones we that put our, cry out. our faith in rocks. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, it also, and I guess that's a good point too. I have a background in acting and musical theater. Mm-hmm. And so that's where I was singing in, in karaoke is kind of getting that, that outlet. <laughs> well, it's so fast forward, we're married, we have some kids and we're invited to church. Um, well, actually mm-hmm. we tried a couple of churches before and they just, it all wouldn't, bad like you yeah, know because i was thinking for first of all i wanted i knew he loved acting i knew he loved theater and i'm like maybe there's some community theater you can do and we couldn't find anything i wanted to support him and encourage him nothing was out there that ship kind of sailed and then i started thinking i'm like we should really go to church yeah it would be a fun family, family that, thing yeah. you know we could wow. go out we could have lunch after sure totally the you kids know will learn some values right yeah. because we knew we don't know anything to teach them mm-hmm. and right. so it would be like a good connecting family thing to do and then that's when we started we went to one one service and it was the sunday on tithing Tithing was the message. Our daughter at the time got stuck in the folding chair. We were like up in the chair, flipped on her and she stuck (laughs) in it. We're spectacle. We're we're out of here. And yeah, so that didn't go well. And then we quit going. That was our effort. And then we had a friend who had invited us to church. Yeah, a couple of years later. Mm -hmm. And then so yes, we went to church and we dropped the kids off and they gave us a pager. And I thought, that's a great trade. Um, (laughs) (laughs) This is a good deal. This is a good place. I like this place. And then we did something that was really kind of strange. I don't know if this is if this is more of a South thing and people might not like haven't heard of this, but we went to the church's Wednesday dinner, which I guess is mainly for the members, but we heard about it. And we're we like, it is $10 and it will feed our entire family. We're we there. were in. Right. We're in. <laughs> and while there met the music minister who was looking for, um, they, they were doing a Christmas play and he was looking for um, people to join the choir. And for people who are going to be part of the play. Mm-hmm. So I thought, okay, that's great. I'll join the choir. So he came up, met him, joined the choir. 
at the end of choir, he, you know, wanted to just hear my voice and stuff like that. You know, we, we had another music minister, a different one who said, you know, anybody could be in the choir, just not anyone can be close to a mic. So um, <laughs> that's probably safe. That's so, true. Yeah. <laughs> so he wanted me, you know, get, you know, had me, you know, like got me in the front of a piano and listen just one-on-one. -on -one. And then he's like, you know what? I, we got this play. I think you would really be great in this part. I didn't know it was the part he was stuck playing because he didn't have anybody else. To, it was the lead part. It was a lead part. And so I get it, but it was the turnaround character. Mm -hmm. It's the and, man who yeah. didn't know Jesus and is discovering, you yeah, know, the Lord God's throughout funny. his process in the play. God and so funny. that's the role he puts him in. Yeah. Wow. Use this, this desire, this drive to want to mm -hmm. get back and do things, put me in a position where I'm faced in to face with my own need for mm -hmm. God. Realizing you are the character. Yeah, that I am the character. Mm -hmm. And so through that process, through that time, I get saved. And then come home and I share with Jamie and I'll, I'll let you, you mm -hmm. share your part on that. And then I start devouring everything mm -hmm. I can get my hands on about Jesus, about the Bible, about, you know, any kind of apologetics. I wasn't a big reader before I was devouring everything mm -hmm. I could because, well, honestly, I wanted to make sure I, I didn't make a mistake. Mm -hmm. That this choice I made with my heart, yeah. you know, made sense, you know, and, and what's and funny did. is he probably didn't question the rocks that much. <laughs> no, I didn't. That's true. It is true. <laughs> yeah. The amethyst didn't have to go through the same the process trials. that Jesus did. <laughs> <laughs> He's just dying for me on the cross, you know, didn't know. It wasn't enough. I read up yeah. on some books, you know, is the Bible real? Yeah. So when he comes to know Jesus, I'm still, you know. At that point of life for me, when he came into my life, you know, I had been through all this trauma and all this abuse and things. He was my savior. And so making that transition. Yeah. Bad place for a mere mortal to be standing. Yeah. Say. Yeah. It's a heavy burden, right? Mm. Yes. And it started off great. I mean, it's mm -hmm. what, I mean, that was kind of the glue that held us together originally because I had all these needs and, and all I was these a pleaser fears. and I wanted to please. And someone yeah. that, that had a need for me. Yeah. But my needs mm -hmm. kept getting greater and greater. And he, this man could not keep up. He talks about how, you know, he started off, you know, doing all the pleasing and meeting all the needs Liked and being on the pedestal. Yeah. Being on the pedestal there for me. But then he's like, it, over time it transitioned into being like part of an Indiana Jones movie. <laughs> We had to stand on the right stone at the right time and do. Hearts are flying out, big boulders are thrown. <laughs> yes, and so when he's sharing with me what had happened that one night, you know, when he became a believer, you know, my honest, genuine prayer was like, "Okay, I will believe this. I will believe in you, Jesus, but I'm not sure I'll ever love you as much as I love this guy." Wow. And so it was very much an honest. I'm going to roll the dice with you, Jesus. But, and also I know fully God knew what my heart needed mm -hmm. and I'm confident. He's like, that's fair. He knew what I went through. He knew, you know, where my heart was. And so, so I think he was gladly accepting that plea of, I need you to show me who you are. And I need you to kind of show up in my life and, and prove to me. But it, it was like the kindness and the goodness of this man, even though he didn't ever, never know Jesus before he was such a good guy. And I see how much, how the Lord used my husband to soften my heart, Wow! because I don't think I could have ever gone from just what I came from to Jesus without having that physical, tangible love. Like this guy's the first one I ever truly felt loved by. And so I know the Lord used him in my life. And that's when we both became believers and we started mm -hmm. doing Bible studies and, and growing in the Lord. And that's where like, we started going to school mm -hmm. for this ministry. Yep. And, um, and then we actually, we got kind of got caught up in, in doing ministry marriage mentoring because very quickly, uh, probably after a year or so I had started because of all the research started becoming a Bible school teacher. And so, and then we were doing marriage ministry and we decided, you know what, maybe we should take this to the next step. And mm -hmm. that's where we went to school, got our master's in, in professional counseling from Liberty. And so we did Christian counseling and we did that on a more of a smaller private practice type of, mm -hmm. of scale. I always had a heart for, for marriages. I hated that the body suffered mm. at the same rates that the world suffered at. Right. right. Yeah. You know? And that's something nobody talks about. The, the pain in the body of the church 
because we don't, it doesn't get addressed, right? Yeah. yeah. And I think when people show up at, at church as believers and in a believing community, nobody wants to say, Hey, I'm struggling mm -hmm. because the expectation is, well, Jesus is enough. And, but we're still navigating this world. We still have the issues of this world. And, and Jesus also, you know, gifted counselors like us, podcasters like you all, you know, different people to help in those situations. We it's still need, yeah, we still need the hands and feet of Jesus here on this earth. But when you show up in church, that's not the place because the assumption is everybody here has it going on because mm -hmm. they know Jesus. Right. and. We that, have enough faith. Yeah, it's not the case. So I think church sometimes is the hardest place. It's meant to be a hospital for the sick mm -hmm. and for the the hurting. But unfortunately, it can easily become a, a club for the holy mm. who all have it mm. together. But that's just not how it's supposed to be. And so that was like a driving factor for you to, gosh, we've got to be doing it better as believers because we have Jesus. Our marriages should be better. Yeah. Yeah. And so then we kind of birthed, uh, we, we realized, hey, we're not, well, one of the things in, in that Jamie usually will, will share is, is we, she, we keep seeing, because uh, she would see a lot more kids and things and see that a lot mm -hmm. of these problems were pretty much across the board were mm -hmm. broken family problems. Yeah. Any individual that was coming in, whether it's anxiety, depression, just recovering from trauma, they're all coming from broken homes. Yeah. And doing that for years, like it started, the tide started turning for us where it's like, we are putting out fires with squirt guns here. Yeah. One hour at a time, one person at a time. And we're realizing the bigger problem where the spark keeps lighting off is in the family. Yeah. It's in the family. When the family breaks down, a lot of broken, hurting people come from that. And that's what we were seeing. And so as hard as it was, we started turning down more individuals and seeing the families because I want to help the kids, but the best way to help the kids long-term is to help their parents mm -hmm. is to help their parents. And so that was the shift. And yeah. so, and so we launched this online ministry mm -hmm. um, expedition marriage. Cause we wanted to, we tell or say that we want people to get help when they see the little blinking check engine light, mm -hmm. not wait till the car's in the ditch on fire. <laughs> Right. 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 And, and going online and, and having our newsletter and all of that in our podcast, it just allows us to cast a wider net and reach more people because their marriages are hurting across mm -hmm. the board, like everywhere, like so many different nations and so many different ages, you know, brand new newlywed couples. And that was, you know, when the pandemic happened, there was a 34% increase in divorces. Mm -hmm. And it was primarily of couples who were married five months or less because 20% of it was because they had no idea what they were doing. They had no skills. They had no tools. They had, didn't even understand what, I mean, you're getting married. Most of us got married going, this is going to be great for me. <laughs> <You> know, <laughs> this is going to be good. I've got somebody to love me and provide all the things I want and make me happy. And you hit that wall. It's like, okay, there's been a bait and switch here. This is not, <laughs> not what it is. And, and those couples didn't make it. And so that's why we want to, you know, cast that wide net and give those tools and, and the heart behind resources. Marriage. Yeah. The, the courses, anything that we can put out that mm -hmm. can help people to start to get a better image of what, what marriage should look like mm -hmm. a, a godly God centered marriage, and then try to get back on track. And if they need more than that, then get in touch with us, you know, for coaching or, you know, get in touch with somebody, mm -hmm. but don't sit in it, in this, this suffering marriage that doesn't honor God. That's not what God wants. He wants joy in the marriage, mm -hmm. especially through trials. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I'll say for us, one of the better things we've ever done was going to a faith-based counselor. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 14 years ago, mm -hmm. I guess. Mm -hmm. And I grew up, you know, in a home, I, I, I make the joke. I was born on Super Bowl Sunday, 1972, and I was in church the next Sunday. You know, I didn't, mm. it's like I, I was never out of the church. Yeah. But, and even had, we had great premarital counseling from an uncle, actually a great uncle of mine who actually was the one who performed our service. But even the picture that he painted for us was not the picture that our counselor painted for us mm. of what mm -hmm. marriage truly means. Like understanding the five ways you love each other and what each mm -hmm. one of those means and, and understanding that and understanding that it's not just a covenant with each other, but it's a covenant with God. 
Mm. Right. You know, it was for sure one of the things that I say I lean on. <laughs> um, and there's been moments where my brain slips and I forget all that. Right. Sure. Yeah. Mm. But you said you like, and you guys work with each stage of marriage. Like I'm, I'm looking at your website, I mean, you got stuff for newlyweds, you've got like it's, and even both sides, like things specifically for men of how to pray to your, how to pray for your wife. And Jamie, you mentioned a while ago that the, the divorce rate for wasn't higher for newlyweds. So is that what mm -hmm. you're seeing now, you know, coming out of it where people are returning to what I would say, is, well, it's never normal, but, you know, back to what it was, you know, mm -hmm. prior to the mess we just came through. So where are you guys seeing that you're the biggest need now? Is it still there? Is that what you're seeing? It's now? not there because unfortunately a lot of newlyweds, they just quit and go. Mm -hmm. They're not as invested in their marriage as much. And so they cut and bail, you know, a lot quicker. And we would love to get more of them. in. we do do a lot of um, premarital counseling, which is a great gift, but sadly, like the unfortunate thing is the biggest thing we see is adultery. Yeah pornography and couples that are really in the ditch. And, you know, the average couple will struggle and suffer in a, you know, unfulfilling or miserable marriage for six years before they seek help. They just think somehow it's supposed to get better. Yeah. And like, those are not good statistics. And so most of the couples we see, they've been struggling and suffering for a good six years wow. before they come in. Yeah. Before you they even start to reach out. Yes. Sure. I was just um, recalling a story this morning where we had a couple that had come in and, you know, one of the questions, you know, the typical questions, yes, like, how long has this been an issue? And the answer was, I don't ever remember it not being an issue. Oh my. This is a couple that was married for 26 hmm. years. Holy and it's like, when you have a wound in your marriage that you allow to fester for 26 years, it invites in all kinds of infection. And unfortunately, like those are most of the couples that we see that it's like, okay, now the pain is so bad, I can't handle it. And so that's when they'll come in. And so it's just, and again, with casting that wider net, like that's why we want couples to know. And what's crazy about that one couple that I'm thinking of, you know how long it took to correct them and get them back on track? Two months. Wow. Two months. They suffered for 26 years for something that could be repaired in two months. Like, we don't want people doing that. Yeah. It's not honoring to God. Mm -mm. It, you know, it, it's not helpful to them. And that's what I was going to say. And that's in, which is fine. I like that story. I'm glad you shared it. The, uh, but we do create these cycles, these dances that will get stuck in these ruts and they'll mm -hmm. keep getting deeper and deeper entrenched in that. And then we start to feel the, this helplessness. Like, I, I, it will never change. I don't know what to do. I keep going through it. We have the, every time everything turns into an argument, we keep, it, mm -hmm. it keeps getting hurtful. And then we feel hopeless. Why well, even start? Because if I even bring something up or even mm -hmm. that, then it's just going to be the same problems. And so then there's that detachment. Mm -hmm. I just need to go ahead and push away now because there's too much of a gap and then we don't know how to get over that divide. Mm -hmm. And we've normalized it. Mm -hmm. We've taken this toxic trait in our marriage and because we've done it so long, it's now a new normal and it's skewed and they don't have any idea. Mm -mm. You know, they just think this is what marriage is, the old ball and chain or whatever, you know, the, mm -hmm. the sayings are that, that are out there. And it's, it's not the way that it's supposed to be. I mean, you know, John 10, 10 is, is one of our driving verses, you know, it's like Jesus came to give us life abundant. Mm -hmm. It's the enemy that comes to steal, kill and destroy, you know, and if you're in a marriage where, you know, your identity is being stolen and your romance and your relationship is being, you know, killed and destroyed, that's not the work of God. Mm -mm. That's not God. I mean, he's here to make your marriage great and abundant. And even in the hard times, he's still there. You can still, you know, enjoy the journey of marriage, even when life is hard, even when you're sitting on a counselor's couch. Mm -hmm. There's still goodness in that. Cause that's, I think that's the biggest blind side of marriage is the growth, mm -hmm. the individual oh, yeah. growth that comes the refinement and God will use your spouse for so much refinement. And I don't recall signing up for that. I, know. <laughs> I, did, not, I did not agree <laughs> to that. <laughs> I saw, you know, I do, um, Christopher, take the Jamie to step into the fire and in a small space to be, you know, twisted right. and mangled and remade into the image of Christ. Yeah, no, That's I don't painful know. Painful process. I would have thought twice about those vows there, but they're good for you. <laughs> and that's the thing with, with Jesus, like the hard stuff is still good. Yeah. Purposeful. It's still good for you. It's purposeful. Yeah. 
I thought you were going to say something. You said that you know, rewriting those vows would really serve us well, right? To mm-hmm. understand that when you're going through that, if we look in the mirror, that it's really probably us that needs to work. You know, yeah, like, absolutely. So many times we're saying, well, they're the issue. Like they're yeah. the issue. Yeah. Yeah. If you would just stop doing what you're doing, then I wouldn't have to be put in a position to have to grow in. <laughs> So I need you. To, I need you to quit. I need that. you to stop. <laughs> That's so good. That's so good. So, um, you mentioned that the things you're seeing the most, which is um, adultery, pornography, and those things. So, it, which leads you to think, well, okay, what's the physical part that's probably that gets been ignored, or where the like, and you said it, Chris, where they're distancing themselves mm-hmm. it becomes a gap in a physical relationship. Is that what you see the root of it is? Or, I mean, where do you think that's coming from? Actually, actually probably on a more an emotional level. Mm-hmm. On, it's on, an emotional They stop being friends. They can't communicate. And so they, they lose this emotional intimacy. You know, that knowing, mm-hmm. that idea of knowing each other, that idea of two becoming one and then being in the process, well, that gets stunted or, or you know, or reversed. And so instead of trying to become one, mm-hmm. they start to rework trying to become separate. And so a lot of those things, not all, but I would say that the majority of adultery and the pornography, that kind of stuff, is actually a byproduct of a breakdown in the relationship and in the intimacy, and then finding the wrong, horribly wrong things mm-hmm. to try to scramble to, you know, that this find the sin that's going to somehow mm-hmm. make me feel better. Right. Right. And a lot of men, you know, which I don't think many people realize one of the top reasons why men would turn to pornography is stress related. Mm -hmm. It is where they can escape. It's where they can find a release. It's where they can go and and feel good without having to share, hey, I'm feeling inadequate at work. You know, I'm fearful over this. I'm I'm worried. I can't bring these these burdens onto my wife. She's already got Mm -hmm. too much to deal with. I'll hold them on myself, which I'm not designed to do. Right. And so, and because you're not designed to do that, you're forced to find some kind of an outlet. And I think the most damaging thing that can happen in a marriage is if you have pride that enters in. Mm -hmm. If you ever get Mm -hmm. to a place where you are too proud to be humble and willing to grow and willing to, you know, the greatest resource God has given us besides himself is one another in a marriage. Mm -hmm. And I don't think couples turn to one another as a resource very Mm -hmm. much. I mean, the Lord gave me to him as a gift to help him, to encourage him, to, to be there, to lift him up and vice versa. He's a gift in my life. You know, we each have strengths and, and helps that we can offer one another. But what we tend to do is in pride, we just go, I can handle it on my own. I don't need to tell mm-hmm. anybody or it's the fear of facing hard things. Yeah. And now we're seeing this much more in younger couples because they, yeah, they grew up in a generation where they weren't taught how to do hard things. They were taught here, you get all the things you want and let me, you know, the helicopter parenting was a big thing. And now these kids are out here and they're like, I don't know what to do. Life is hard. I either run away or I find one of the many horrible coping mechanisms. And that's what it is. And so those are, you know, pornography, adultery, things of that nature, they're coping mechanisms and they're not healthy ones. And so, yeah, well, it's like sin always promises more than will deliver mm-hmm. and always take us further than we ever thought we'd go. Mm-hmm. And so there's this, you know, the world's just feeding in, this will make you feel better. This will do yeah. this, will, the, the set, you know, help out the situation. And it just takes us down roads that we never thought we'd go versus what God says is the sacred relationship, this, this sacred partner that I'd given you, this helpmate, you know, you all use each other, lean on mm-hmm. each other, bear with one another's burdens. Yeah. And then you'll be able to be more successful and because you're doing it my way. Now, it doesn't mm-hmm. mean that we'll all be like fantastic and it'll be smooth sailing. No. And, you know, mm-hmm. Suzanne, you mentioned about that earlier. Simple is not easy. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. Yeah. But it's definitely a, a, we're given a path forward. We're strong believers that that most of what God says about relationships in the Bible should start with the marriage first. Mm-hmm. You know, even the verses where it says, pray for your enemy. And, you know, when your enemy's hungry, feed them. And when they're thirsty, because, because, because there's nights, there's I, I'm sure somebody just heard that went, yeah, there's mm-hmm. nights where I like mm-hmm. drop that plate in front of them. Mm-hmm. Not happy mm-hmm. that you, that I'm giving you food, <laughs> but I'm doing it because God told me, God, it's you funny. better be, better be storing that treasure up for me. <laughs> it's funny. You said that we had a couple that was, I think it's actually our second episode. 
and they were talking about you know praying with each other at night mm -hmm. and he said mm -hmm. man sometimes that's hard that's hard yes. because you get, like you you know there's something underlying that's a problem and the wife in the situation she said yes yeah, she was last night or was it, it was, yeah i think it was a night before was she was she said, yeah, last night we actually just spent the whole time praying for other people. Yeah. <laughs> yes. so it was still it. an accessory prayer, but it was not for each other. It was for other people that were in their lives. Yes. Yeah. Yes. We've prayed together at night. And I'm like, I'm not close to my eyes. You can pray, but I'm not close to my eyes. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it happens. And I think those are the things, those honest moments. And even, you know, we don't have any qualms with, with sharing our testimony mm -hmm. and going, we butchered this. We didn't do that. That's what we need to be doing in the church, right? Mm -hmm. because Amen. if we don't share the hard stuff, if we hide all of our hurts and our hard things, we're squashing what the gospel is meant to do. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. meant to bring healing. We're, mm -hmm. we're not allowing other believers to lift us up, to encourage us, to walk mm -hmm. alongside of, of us. And so if we're saying we're all good, we'll just keep it behind closed doors. We have no need for the body of Christ. Yeah. Amen. And that's not what we're called to do. And not to mention, you know, God gives us these testimonies. So we, we have these trials that might feel like there's no purpose, but he gives us these mm -hmm. testimonies through them, which helps give it purpose mm -hmm. that, that they're not for not, right. you know, if you want your pain to be for not, then just keep it to yourself, I guess. But, mm -hmm. you know, if you want it to God to be able to paint beauty out of those ashes, then mm -hmm. share the testimony, no matter how you might think, I guess we're, we get vulnerable and like, don't want to, you know, go, Oh, I'm human. And I, I make mistakes. We share that. We, we even share, you mm -hmm. know, that we still have struggles. The joke is that we're just because we're, you know, Christian counselors that we never fight. Mm -hmm. We still have, we just know where it's coming. I'm way too <laughs> feisty for that. <laughs> we just know where the other person is coming from usually faster. Right. And we usually get, it, you know, circle yeah, back we around. We recover quicker, yeah. right? but we still fail. You said that's what the church needs to do better. It's about a year and a half ago, I started leading a connect group at our church. And mm -hmm. our leadership of our church is what I think is super transparent. They do a really good job that's of great. leading our church. Um, but I felt led to start this, leading this connect group. And it's usually, it's mostly older, older mm -hmm. adults. Mm -hmm. When I say older, I mean, I'm 50. They're probably in their, most of them are in their 70s. 70s. Yeah, older changes now, doesn't yeah, it? I know. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. perspective I, yeah yes. and I, and I love them right i love my connect group but i mean you think about how much time they spend in the church and the church for the most part and i'm not saying our church and then the church mm -hmm. body itself is just like i mean hashtag blessed was should be banned if they're going to take yes. something off twitter hashtag blessed, yes. it's, yeah you know it's misleading right mm -hmm. and I think mm -hmm. leading this connect group one of the things i try to do that is be super transparent super mm -hmm. vulnerable so it'll drive the conversation of, hey, yeah. well, you say you're struggling with this. We're studying David. We've seen all his struggles. Like he was the right. chosen king and then the following king really, really quickly. But then you see his response, like his immediate response when Nathan came to him says, this is what you did. His immediate response was to fall before the Lord said, I've sinned against mm. you. It's an understanding that, you know, that's, that's gospel. <laughs> you know, it's, yeah. it's, it's, yes. it's, it's gospel. It's, it's, hey, you are still mm. after, a man after man's a, a man after God's own heart, mm -hmm. just recognize it and, yeah. Be yeah. Mm -hmm. and have someone that will help hold you accountable. Mm -hmm. This right. relationship, the spousal relationship mm -hmm. is probably your first accountability partner. It's just really, really hard when it comes from, from, from mm -hmm. them. Yeah. Yeah. It's so true. And, you know, and strength is admirable. We can watch you people who have it all together and who are so gifted and good at what they do. And, but we sit back from afar and go, oh, that's amazing for them. Mm -hmm. I would never be able to do that. But me. weakness yeah. is relatable. Amen. And so when we see this person, this couple that we admire, and they're saying, oh, we were bad. We were in a ditch or we're recovering from an affair or this and that has happened. Now it's that, okay, so I can do it too. Because right. what you're telling me is you messed this up and you made it. But as if all we're showing is the hashtag blessed, mm, right? then it's just mm -hmm. us gifted with this ability that nobody else can have, right? Mm -hmm. you know? So yeah, we've got to do better as a church body. Yeah. We got to love each other differently. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Loving each mm -hmm. other by showing our vulnerability and transparency, I think, again, yeah. the relatability. You said, I love that. Mm -hmm. it on. It's the relatability. I can relate mm -hmm. to that. It makes sense to me. So Yeah. I think intentionality comes into to play in a big, big way, because not only do you need to be intentional with your spouse, with your mm -hmm. immediate household family, you need to be intentional about your community mm -hmm. um, and your church community, especially, because if you 
if you sense something that's off with someone, you have to be intentional in seeking a way to serve that. Yeah. I I don't think we do. um, We don't do as good a job as we should in that regard, but if we're serving well here, then it becomes a little bit more second nature. We can serve outwardly and be more open to those opportunities when they arise. Service starts at home. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It sure does. We need to to lovingly meddle more with each other. Yes. (laughs) We need to get in each other's business. That's great. (laughs) Lovingly Lovingly meddle. That's good. I'm going to bring that up with my kids. I'm going to quote you the next time they tell me to go away. (laughs) Yeah, sure. (laughs) I'm lovingly meddle. There you go. So how can people, like if they want to connect with you guys and are looking for services, how do people connect with you? What's the best place for them to find you? I know your Instagram page is awesome <laughs> hilarious i love watching you guys. Um, but what, are, what are some places people can go find you um mainly our website which is expeditionmarriage.org and that will have all of our links for wherever we're at on social media we'll have a link to our podcast to our courses you can sign up for our newsletter that we send out once a week and so everything we have is all put together right there awesome awesome is there any final thoughts you want to give to the audience that anything that you think they definitely need to take away because there's been a lot of takeaways, but mm. anything yeah. you, you want to say take away? I would just, I always love to encourage people fix what's broken. Mm-hmm. It's not the problems that will take out your marriage. It's what you do with them. Yeah, You can ignore them and let them fester and make everything harder or lose your marriage because of it, or you can deal with it and link arms and go, you know what? It's me and you against this issue. Yes. It's never me against team. you. It's me and you against whatever it is facing our, our marriage or, or our lives. And so just be willing to do the hard things, be willing to fix what's broken, because when Jesus is involved in that, it's going to be good and it's going to be purposeful. So we as believers do not have to fear anything in this world mm-hmm. when we walk through hard times with him. So be willing to fix what's broken. That's, that's what I got. I'm leave it that. that was pretty yeah. powerful. I don't want that. I would just bring it down. Yeah. <laughs> Very honoring, Chris. I love that. Um, we always ask one of the guests to pray us out as we come mm-hmm. to an end. So we, you guys take it over. All right. Mm-hmm. Father God, we're just so grateful for this time that we had to be able to share the, the share this testimony that you've given to us. Uh, we just pray that, that you're able to use this to glorify yourself, to make much of, of you. Uh, we don't want this to be something that that brings us glory. Um, that, that we want you to get all the glory and the honor, all the praise. Uh, we want to it, you to use it to expand your kingdom, to draw people to you, to to encourage them, to uplift them, to let them know that they're not alone. And they're, whatever their circumstances is, they're they're not alone. That other people are going through it, whether they're sharing it or not, and that there's hope. And there's help uh, that they've they've got you uh, just the, the, that that resource that that the the van, the vine to be able to to empower them, but also you've given you know hands and feet and wise and godly counsel and and people who will give support and and we just pray that those people will just seek out that that help that godly help um, to be able to to find that abundant life that you so desire for us so that way we can have the joy the abundant joy um that in all of our trials and circumstances not just you know in the good times but also in the times when we are being tested uh, that so people can see that and be drawn towards you and know that you are god we just love you and praise you in jesus name we pray amen amen, amen. chris and jamie thank you guys so so much it was awesome Thank you. Chris and Suzanne, thanks so much. It was really great. Thank you. Thank you for listening to another episode of Faith, Family, Fulfillment, brought to you by Chris and Suzanne Vester. We hope you enjoyed listening to this week's guests and stories. If you liked what you heard, please consider subscribing wherever you listen to podcasts. Follow Chris and Suzanne on Instagram at H-V-A-U-T-O-C-O-O and Suzanne.C.Vester. That's at S-U-Z-A-N-N-E dot C dot V-E-S-T-E-R. 